Welcome to the New Haven Independent Vlog News Summary Direct from our assignment desk, otherwise known as my compost team. Let's see what stories are cooking up this week. Ooh, psst, come over here. I got something hot for you. I happen to get my hands on all these email addresses printed out that you can use if you're running for office and you want to hit people up nine times a day about why they should send you money. Well, actually, that's no good. They don't use paper anymore. Someone got the electronic file. The mayor claims someone stole his email addresses from when he ran for mayor in 2019 and now an opponent is using them to hit people up for money. He said they were stolen, he wrote a letter, you know, you're gonna go to jail if you do this. The campaign manager for the opponent, Gage Frank said, I took those and it was legal. I used to be your campaign manager. And then when you, Justin Elker, became mayor, you told me to enter them in the city da database. You could send those people messages. So that became public property. Well, whoever's right about stealing, I think the real crime, though it's not illegal, it's the way all these candidates everywhere in the country keep inundating us with emails and texts all day, just bothering us to send them money. I'd rather they let us do the spelling bee in peace. Well, speaking of stolen, this gun is not stolen, but a 40 caliber Beretta was. In 2016, a guy fell asleep at McDonald's, had the gun in his car, someone took it. This week, that same gar, gun showed up in a car where a man was asleep on Crescent Street. He also allegedly had all these drugs ready for sale in the front seat. The police took that and the gun. So some people thought the lesson was don't fall asleep in your car with a stolen gun there. I think the lesson is that the NRI needs to NRA needs to come in and let's stop these jackbooted government thugs from violating our Second Amendment right to fall asleep with stolen guns in our car. What next? What next? Look at all these books. I cover you, Butler, Chekhov. Boy, well, this is nothing compared to the amount of books you find at New Haven Reads. 20 years ago, Christine Alexander had an idea. Let's just have everyone bring their extra books. Let's give them to other people who want to read. She started small on Ashton Street in a little spot. We all brought up books. It was great, but she had so much vision. Then she said, all these books, let's get adults with time on their hand to volunteer, to tutor these kids who need extra help reading one-on-one, -on -one, get to know each other, and learn how to read. Well, what a great idea. 20 years later, there were four of these locations. Every year, hundreds of adults, hundreds of kids. And it just showed us someone can have a great idea like the late Chris in New Haven and other people will help them do it. And then it blossoms and then after she's gone, it's still there and we have a better city. Just like with bike helmets. You're gonna see a lot of these this weekend at the 15th edition, celebrating the 15th anniversary of Rock to Rock, the ride where five, 600 people come for a day of bike riding and food and music and celebration. You know, the spandex people going 60 meters or miles, whatever. And then the, the kind of calm rides for families and stuff. Well, this is another reason to celebrate that milestone, another case where people who cared about making it a cycle-friendly city, about community and about the environment, built up this idea, everyone joined in and it happened. So they say people don't bowl alone. People are bowling alone now in America. They're not going to church, they're not going to union meetings, they're not going to ward committee meetings. Well, some of us still do, but it's true. But they're going elsewhere, there's this whole independent initiative where people say we don't like the old institutions but we still care about being together and doing good things and making our community better we're not bowling alone in new haven we're seeing each other and making it a better place well i can't find an oak leaf here those institutions took root so does like bergamo and it's such an open studio stuff in new haven but oak trees are not taking root when the old ones die few of them are coming back now we're really the oak city not the elm city this is the indigenous she was towering all over the city thrived here 300 year trees this is not just New Haven. Apparently because of climate change and because of deer, oak trees aren't regenerating. Well, now they might in New Haven. I was just here this week where in eight spots in New Haven and Parkland, they're fencing it off, including Edgewood Park, keeping the deer out, and they're part of a National Forest Service study where we're putting 1,200 saplings of oaks, different kind, to see what's going to help them thrive again, become an oak city again. Well, this is something hot just between you and me. I got my hands on. We have a new building official in New Haven. The guy in charge of like telling you whether this building has to come out, down or not, whether you can build here, whether you can get this permit. His name is Bob Dylan. So I got my hands on all the stuff that Bob Dylan has written. I was thinking, does this give us clues to how he'll do his job? He has something here, dear landlord, it's not very friendly. All along the watchtower, the wicked messenger, buckets of rain, uh-oh. Knocking on heaven's door, wait a second. This is Bob Dylan, D-Y-L-A-N. Oops, I'm sorry. The new guy in New Haven is D-I-L-L-O-N, Bob Dylan. Sorry about that mistake. The real Bob Dylan, New Haven. Good luck in your new job, because we're doing a lot of building in New Haven at the grassroots and in the buildings. Till next time, this New Haven Independent Vlog News Summary. And remember, always pick up your trash.